Today with Joseph Prince. There are some issues we don't compromise on, and one of the greatest vital issues is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will the real gospel please, please stand up? You say, Pastor Prince, what, what, what's the deal about believing the real gospel? The reason all of us here are blessed, the reason why that person is protected, why, why, why people are being whole, how come we are sharing testimonies after testimonies in my book, in, uh, every Sunday that I share, of people being delivered from all kinds of addictions. Why? It's because they believe the gospel. They have believed something right that caused their lives to be right. You know, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So there are those who will say things like, well, the chief end of all men is to glorify God. And I say, Amen. St. Augustine was right. The chief end of man is to glorify God. I am for it. Amen. But do you know that in the Bible, in the Gospels, it always says when Jesus healed someone, when He opened the eyes of the blind, when He raises the dead, the people glorified God. Amen. Notice that glory to God happens when good happens to men. So God wants men to receive His good. God is so good that He wants to be good to you. Even when you are not good, God is good. You cannot change God's goodness by your bad behavior. Amen. So, Jesus said, I come, look at the purpose, one of the purpose why He came. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. The entire city came to hear the Word of God. And the Jews were jealous because they never had this crowd in their synagogue. The same thing is happening today. Because they see a crowd, they will say, well, he's preaching, you know, things about, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not preaching the Bible. But we don't care what people think. We only care that Jesus is glorified and you are greatly helped. That your body prospers. Your mind is at peace. Your children are protected. Amen. We want the results of the gospel in your lives. Amen, church. The Lord. You know, we started a series, so I want to tell you first, by the word of the Lord, many of the testimonies you heard are people who receive without hands being laid on them. No one came personally and prayed for them, but as they hear the word of the gospel, miracles happen to them. Miracles are transformations of minds, all right, healings of bodies, freedom from addictions, amen, uh, 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 salvation of family members, amen. The are teenagers turn around. All of a sudden, they have a desire for God. That is supernatural. All this happens because they are hearing the Word. So it's vital. Don't let anyone ever tell you that he, sitting down here and hearing the Word of God or watching via television or, or online, all right, it's, it's nothing. It's doing you nothing. No, no, this is not psychology. This is not, this is not uh, listening to a lecture in a university. This is God's Word. Amen. And in spite of the vessel delivering it, God will confirm the word with signs and wonders following. Amen. Listen, God confirms what? The word, not the preacher. God confirms the word with signs and wonders following. Following means what? You got to hear the word first. And God's delivery system, and I've said this time and again, God's delivery system is the preaching of the word of God. So whenever you are in trouble, when you are in a crisis, you are in a valley of, of, of trouble, the best thing you can do for yourself or for your loved ones who is in trouble or who is being challenged in their, in their bodies or whatever is to listen to the word of the gospel. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in that gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Amen? So it is the power of God. And the word power there uh, denotes miracles, signs, and wonders. That's the word they use many a times for, for miracles, uh, is the word dunamis. Amen. Other words are anagis, for where you get the word energy, divine energy. So we started a series uh, uh, two weeks ago on leadership, about how to be a vessel uh, that is uh, honored, a pillar in the house of God. Remember that? Amen. And how God took uh, Peter and turned him around into a pillar. Amen. A man who was wavering to a man who would preach and 3,000 people were saved. Then last week we saw the defense of the gospel. Will the real gospel please stand up? Because today we hear all kinds of uh, voices. We need to go back to the original. And where better than the primitive church? So I'm going to continue that because last week we covered Acts 13, all right, then Acts 14. Now why is it vital that you understand this? Why? There are some things in Christianity, there are some things that we don't, uh, we don't compromise on. 
Some things we can, you know, like you believe that everyone should uh, worship on Sunday, or uh, you, you believe that everyone should worship on Saturday, uh, Jewish believers. Go ahead. These are non-vital issues. You believe that, that communion should have real wine. Some believe uh, Jews. Go ahead. No problem. Some believe your, your bread should be eleven. Some believe unleavened bread. Go ahead. No problem. Amen. But there are issues you cannot compromise on. The deity of Christ. The humanity of Christ. He was born of a virgin. He died on the cross. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. And by him, he will judge the, the living and the dead. Now, those things you cannot compromise. If so, uh, uh, a so-called seminary, Bible seminary professor comes up and say that uh, he believes that Christ wasn't born of a virgin, amen, that man is a blasphemer, that man is not of God. We cannot fellowship with such a person. There's no compromise. These are vital issues, amen. And if you start dividing among ourselves, you know, over issues that are not vital, then we are fools and the devil has succeeded. So. There are people who have different views, different beliefs about certain things and all that. All right, just go ahead. If they want to take communion once a year or once a month, all right, don't fight over it. That's not important, amen. Those are non vital issues. Right. Amen. We believe that the Bible says often, it means often. Yeah. And that, that's our, our, our belief, amen. But there are some issues we don't compromise on. And one of the greatest vital issues is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Will the real gospel please, please stand up? You say, Pastor Prince, what, what, what's the deal about believing the real gospel? The reason all of us here are blessed, the reason why that person is protected, why, why, why people are being whole, how come we are sharing testimonies of the testimonies in my book in, uh, every Sunday that I share of people being delivered from all kinds of addictions? Why? It's because they believe the gospel. They have believed something right that caused their lives to be right. You know, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So there are those who will say things like, well, the chief end of all men is to glorify God. And I say, Amen. St. Augustine was right. The chief end of man is to glorify God. I am for it. Amen. But do you know that in the Bible, in the Gospels, it always says when Jesus healed someone, when He opened the eyes of the blind, when He raises the dead, the people glorified God. Amen. Notice that glory to God happens when good happens to men. So God wants men to receive His good. God is so good that He wants to be good to you. Even when you are not good, God is good. Amen. You cannot change God's goodness by your bad behavior. Amen. God overcomes, God's goodness overcomes our evil. Amen. God's goodness is greater than our evil. Amen. So, Jesus said, I come, look at the purpose, one of the purpose why He came. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. So what is life more abundant? If you see a child or a young boy running in the evening sun by the beach, laughing, giggling, scooping water, amen? His, his cheeks are rosy. What do you say? That's life. Yeah. Do you hear what Jesus said? I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. If you listen to Pastor Prince, I never preached the prosperity gospel, yeah. never. The gospel is not prosperity. The gospel is the gospel of the grace of God. Yeah, yeah. But if it produces prosperity in your life, I'm not going to apologize for that. Yeah. Wherever the gospel has gone, yeah. it has brought health. It has brought families together. It has, it has civilized the society. Yeah. It caused people to throw away their drugs, throw away their, their alcoholism, to throw away everything and give their lives to Jesus yeah. and live the abundant life. And, and, and as a result, because they live that life, their lives prosper. Are we going to apologize for that? No. Amen. Wherever Jesus goes, you know, can you imagine Jesus on earth, wherever he goes, he unstopped deaf ears, cleansed the leper, raised the dead, and multiplied loaves and fishes. Can you imagine following him thinking that he wants us to be poor? Amen. So if you are poor, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't have the mentality that God wants you to be poor to humble you. Neither do you have the mentality that if you are successful with God, you have all kinds of monies rolling over you. Both are wrong and erroneous. But if you believe the gospel, you will prosper financially. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's the consequence of believing right. When you believe right, you honor your body, you don't get into, into a, you're not addicted to wine, you're not addicted to uh, drinking, you're always stone drunk, you know, these things are very expensive. 
The Bible says the gluttonous and the wine Bible will come to wrecks. Are you listening, people? It's very quiet here, all of a sudden. <laughs> Amen? But really, it's not, it's not that we don't have money. It's that we don't have discipline. Because I tell you this, there are some things we don't need that we want, that we find out after we buy, we don't need. And then we say we got no money. All right, moving right along. What I'm trying to say is that when you believe the gospel, your whole life adjusts into wholeness. Because the gospel is the power of God to your wholeness. So let's look at Peter now as he preaches the gospel. It's the first time. You must understand, you see, one thing, one challenge we have in the 21st century is that we have Christians that don't understand the Old Testament. I'm speaking generally. I know you folks understand the Old Testament. Amen? But I'm speaking generally. Many believers don't understand the Old Testament. They don't understand Judaism. They don't understand uh, 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 the Jews and their place in God. But they understand New Testament. They understand what Christ did. Okay? So am I right to say that this, this is the, the main bulk of Christendom today? But in the early church, in the primitive church, they actually, it's the reverse. Many of them, they know Judaism to the core. They know it back to back. Many of the Jews that were saved in the, in the beginning of the early church on the day of Pentecost were Jews. In fact, on the day of Pentecost, they were all Jews. There were some proselytes, but the vast majority are Jews. And then the early church was, was a Jewish church. Messianic believers, they knew their Bibles well. So when, when, when Paul gathered the Ephesus elders together, many of them were Jewish people who got saved. So they still have the mentality of the Old Testament. And Paul told them, I, I want you to preach the whole counsel of God. I have not withheld from you the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God means what? In that day and age, don't just preach Moses. Don't just preach based on the Torah alone. If you preach on the Old Testament, bring Christ out. Amen. When you preach from the Old Testament, bring grace out. Amen. That's why the whole counsel of God is not what people think today. Today they say that if someone is preaching grace, he's not preaching the whole counsel of God. But in, back in those days, it is the opposite. He's telling them, don't just preach the law. The, the, in fact, you can preach the law by bringing Christ out of it. That's how you preach the law. Amen? So, in that verse alone, we have a divine sandwich. Three verses before the whole counsel of God, Paul tells them, I, I've, God has sent me to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. And then a few verses after the whole counsel of God, that verse, it says what? Again, the same thing. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up. So the whole counsel of God is actually the word of His grace. Blessed are your eyes for you see and your ears for they hear. I'm telling you a lot of places, you know, and I mean a lot of places, you don't get to hear the word of His grace. You still hear the word of the law. So we saw Paul preach in Acts 13 in a synagogue. When he's preaching to the Jews, all right, when he preached to the Jews, he declares to them their entire Old Testament. It's amazing. Stephen did the same thing. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, declared the entire Old Testament in a short while. He started from Abraham and also, also uh, uh, Paul in Antioch, Pisidia, that we saw last week in the synagogue. He preached the Old Testament, the history, and then came to Jesus. Then when he came to Jesus, he says that whoever believes in Him, uh, therefore, this, through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And then he says, by him all who believe are justified from all things from which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses. We saw the gospel right there. The original gospel, the primitive gospel, the gospel that Paul himself preached, that God saw fit to keep that sermon in the book of Acts. So if ever there comes a time, we forget the original copy, dust it off and compare it to the gospel today. And will the real gospel please stand up? Because today when you preach the real gospel, people think you are queer, you are funny. You came out from some stone. You crawl out from some, underneath some, some funny stone and you came out with this idea of the gospel. No, my friend, it's not original. Paul calls it my gospel because Jesus entrusted him first with it. Amen. Are you listening, people? And then we saw the result. The entire city came to hear the word of God. And the Jews were jealous because they never had this crowd in their synagogue. The same thing is happening today. 
Because they see a crowd, they will say, well, he's preaching, you know, things about, you know, he's, he's, not, he's not preaching the Bible. Oh, we don't care what people think. We only care that Jesus is glorified and you are greatly helped. Yeah. That your body prospers. Amen. Your mind is at peace. Amen. Your children are protected. Amen. Amen. We want the results of the gospel in your lives. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we go one step further. We covered Acts 13, Acts 14. We saw in Iconium how he preached the gospel as well. Amen. And now we come to Acts 15. And Acts 15 opens up like this, the next chapter. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now, this certain men came down from Judea. So they came from Steve, uh, sorry, James Church. James, the half-brother of Jesus, all right? And that was Mary and Joseph had sons after Jesus. Jesus wasn't born of Joseph. You all know he was born of a virgin before they came together as husband and wife. But Jesus had earthly brothers and sisters. Okay? So Mary had children. The Bible tells us that. And James believed on his own brother. That's not easy to do, you know. In fact, when Jesus walked on earth, they didn't believe in him. But at this point, after he died and rose again, they put their trust in him. They saw something they never saw before. Amen? And James became the first pastor of the church in Jerusalem. So he, don't forget, he's a Jew. So he is very steep in Judaism still. Yes, he believed in Jesus, but there's still a lot of, 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 of unlearning to do. Okay? You understand with me so far? Yeah. So let's follow this now. So certain men came down from that church in Jerusalem. Obviously, they are believers, Jewish believers. And they say, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute, you understand no small dispute when I say that he and he and he didn't have no small dispute. That means it's big. <laughs> big disagreement. My wife and I just had no small dispute, that's all. That means it was huge. It was mega. Amen? So there's a big quarrel. So to, even today around the world, there's a big dispute. Do you keep the law of Moses or not? All right? So, therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, they, those Judaizers, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem, to HQ, to the apostles and elders about this question. Now, I want to tell you something first. You are looking at, at a chapter that settles it once and for all in the book of Acts. Today, we are talking to uh, people about, you know, uh, can a, should a Christian, after they are saved, should they keep the law? Now, circumcised, even those, who, those Christians who teach that believers should keep the law, they don't get circumcised. That part, conveniently, they don't obey. I, I wonder why. But the other parts, they want to obey. Okay? You know, my friend, the law stands as a composite whole. You cannot say this is moral law, this is ceremonial law, this is... No, the law is a composite whole. It stands as a whole or falls altogether. You cannot pick and choose. Amen. That's how much you must honor the law. And that's how it stands as a united whole. Man divides for teaching purpose, but it is one. Okay? So the Bible says they all decided to go, to go up to Jerusalem. Verse 3. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy to all the brethren. You must understand, these are Jewish believers. Paul is a Jewish believer. Barnabas is a Jewish believer. The apostles of the early church are Jewish believers. Today it's the other way around. Amen? Today, a Singaporean is preaching the gospel in Israel via their TV. Amen? And this much we can do. The greatest thing we can do to Israel today is to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the same gospel that says, which we are about to see. All right. When they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders. Notice apostles and the elders. This is a leadership thing, man. And I, I ask the Lord, Lord, I, I want to preach sermons that are easy and all that, and I don't want to be too hard on the people. God says these people are leaders. Amen. God's going to raise you as a leader. Amen. You're going to stand up and make a defense of the gospel in your workplace, in your school, in your universities. Amen. You know, people think that unless you go to Bible school, no, some, some Bible schools, not all, okay, but some, in fact, there are more and more Bible schools that are teaching liberal theology. Yeah. Amen. They are saying things like he's not born of a virgin. 
You know, there are people who are not even safe who are professors in Bible schools. You know, make sure you go to the right Bible school. And God never designed that you only understand the Bible through Bible school. Because all the apostles that, that, that taught the Bible in the early church, amen, except for Paul who was learned, but not learned in biology and, and mathematics. He was learned in the Old Testament. Learned about the laws of God. But the rest of them are fishermen, tax collectors, people who are just normal people and they can preach the gospel. So can you. Now, if you go to Bible school because God tells you to, to learn more, that's a different deal altogether. But to have the mentality that you must go to Bible school before you understand the Bible in your house, that's nonsense. You have the Holy Spirit and He will teach you. He will guide you. Thank God for teachers. We make use of them. Amen. Teachers are there to help you. In fact, when you hear a teacher preach on a passage, that why, why didn't I ever see that before? Does that happen to you? Amen. That's the gift of a teacher. But that doesn't take away your own personal time in the Word. Amen. So, they came to the elders and reported all things that God had done with them. You must understand that, that miracles are happening among the, Jew, among the Gentiles. And the Jews are shocked. So they, they now go to the, to the HQ in Jerusalem to discuss about all these Gentiles that are safe. Shall we put them under law? All right, this is not a question about how to get them saved. They are already saved. It's a question now that they are saved, now that they are born again, do we put them under the law? Isn't that the question today? Yeah. All right, but some of the sect of the Pharisees, now, they are now in Jerusalem. Some of the sect of the Pharisees who believe, so these are believers. All right, so some of the sect of the Pharisees believe rose up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So it's not just circumcision here. There's a stake. Some people say, well, Pastor Prince, uh, this passage is just about circumcision. No, no. The whole idea is circumcision opens the door to keeping all the law. Are we still under the law? As you will see later on, it's not circumcision alone. It's keeping the law of Moses. So the, the Pharisees, once again, I remind you, it's not about how to get the Gentiles safe. They're already safe. Paul got them safe. Barnabas got them safe. The question is, now that they are safe, are they under the law? Are you listening, people? That is a big debate even today. That grace is now spread all over the earth. And the question comes back, that has been settled 2,000 years ago. It's been settled. Amen. It's necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So they're all at the Jerusalem council. So some people stood up, Pharisees, former Pharisees, who now believe in Jesus. They said, yes! We must command them to keep the law of Moses. Next verse. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, wow, just like today, there are those who are coming against grace, much dispute. God bless their ignorant hearts. But it's okay. Even back then, the encouragement, there was much dispute among believers. And what, what's the division? Whether after you are safe, you must keep the law. Amen. Are we still under the law? And when there'd be much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, good while ago is 15 years ago, God chose among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and belief. So they're all quarreling. Then Peter goes, guys, hey guys, guys, listen. Or Jewish stuff, hey. Listen, listen, guys, listen. So they all kept quiet. He's Peter who walked with Jesus, who preached earlier and 3,000 people got saved. Peter says, do you guys remember 15 years ago, I preached, God used me to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. That's the first time the Gentiles got to hear the gospel. Wow. I said, wow. It's the first time ever the Gentiles got to hear the gospel. Are you with me? Yeah. And Peter says, 15 years ago. What happened 15 years ago? So flashback. Let's go back in time. We are discussing about the real gospel people. Yeah. If you don't have the real gospel, today, to the extent you don't believe the gospel, the good news about the gospel, to that extent you are depressed. To that extent you have fears. To that extent 
all right? You suffer symptoms of the curse that Christ has redeemed us from. You believe wrong, you will live wrong. Righteousness is a gift, and your salvation and your righteousness you can never lose because you never gain it by your works in the first place. How can you lose it by your bad works either? As a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry, you can now request for Joseph's three CD audio series, Work Not Required. Discover why righteousness is a gift. Join Joseph in this eye-opening resource as he shares how to freely receive God's forgiveness, righteousness, favor, healing, and peace. See your faith grow as you learn why you don't have to strive to please God, to enjoy a real and personal relationship with Him. And for a gift of $75 or more, you will also receive Joseph's two-DVD album, Break Every Bad Habit with Christ. In this powerful resource, Joseph shows you how you can stop struggling in your areas of guilt and frustration and step into faith and freedom. Experience true transformation when you personally experience the Father's love for you. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Get your copy now at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-901-4300. a lot of us that were crying out to God saying, you've got to send us an answer because we know that this is not the true gospel, but we just don't know where we're, we don't get where we're missing it. And so I think it took all of those prayers to bring a man from Singapore into America. And so everything that Pastor Prince is preaching about Jesus Christ is applicable to every situation. When I wake up in the morning, I expect good and not evil. I'm not waiting for the second shoe to drop. It's not dropping. Through his teaching, you'll just learn to trust God at all times. Even when you stumble and you fall, you know that you and God are still close, that there's no space in between you all at all. If you want to be set free, if you want to know that God is for you, if you want to understand all the different dimensions of Christ and why it's applicable to you today, then you want to listen to Joseph Prince's ministry. Next on Joseph Prince. Today the doctors will diagnose you, sometimes gives you a prescription. They deal with the fruits. Thank God for doctors. But many a times they cannot deal with the root. The gospel deals with the root. Repentance is granted by God. God also is granted. It's not something of human effort. Many times it's the idea of penance that is erroneous that passes off as repentance today. You can be preaching and don't use the word repentance, but people's minds are changing. Every Sunday, that's what happens in our church. Joseph Prince Ministries is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible for the amount that exceeds any fair market value of the materials you receive from us. 